Let's move to the tech side. How much is this going to be affected by the technology, by the contact yeah. tracing? Can, if, if we're all, if we have to publicly opt in, if it's not forced, like it would be in China, for example, or Singapore, uh, how effective is that going to be? What, what do you think about how our lives will or won't change with the technology intervention? Uh, personal behavior dictates a larger range of public policy. So let's start off with what we have right now. We have uh, three or four bi-directional opt-in systems. The one that I like is COVID near you. It's been running as flu near you for about 10 years. They've got about three quarters of a million people who opt in and every week report their symptoms. And from that, we're able to get a very good spot map of the country and predict where flu and now COVID will be a couple of weeks before CDC will. Uh, if we can get 100 million people voluntarily opting in, even though it's not a stochastic random probability sample, um, we will have some wonderful uh, tools. Apple and Google, two companies we don't think of as working hand in glove usually. A uh, big announcement that they're planning on working together to help create a technological tool to fight uh, coronavirus. What, what do you make of this? Uh, what, do, what do you think about what they're doing together? Full disclosure, um, I was at Google for three years and, uh, and ran Google.org, and I am a proud ex oogler uh, And uh, Steve Jobs and I were friends from the time he was 19 years old, and uh, I'm, I'm very close to Apple as well. I'm so happy to see these two tech giants uh, engage in a bit of a, a detente. Uh, their rivalry has been uh, hard and complicated. And it's really important that they've changed uh, each of their operating systems uh, to allow compatibility in one way that using clever uh, random digit generators to have random numbers, you can have a short term ID that tells you wh where your phone has been in uh, contact with somebody who was in contact with a, a case of COVID without divulging your personal identity, your name, any of the demographics that make it easy to find you. I think that's wonderful. And uh, this is one of the things that they did in China. It's one of the better ones that they did. We just need to understand uh, that not everybody is lucky enough to have uh, an Apple uh, iPhone or an Android. Uh, smartphone penetration in the world is, yes, around 50%, but it doesn't penetrate all sectors of society fairly or equally. So homeless populations, which are a huge uh, problem uh, for them and for the rest of the world uh, in the issue of the pandemic. Um, minority groups, African-Americans in some places are 40% of the deaths when they are 15 or 20% of the population. Uh, we're not even just talking about equity and justice. It's, it's the places that you will find the disease that you're less apt to find the wealth to buy a smartphone, the nursing home population, the elderly, uh, people who are in convalescent homes. These are folks who are less likely to be the beneficiary of this new technology. So I think of it as a 30% solution uh, and that it's the beginning of a lot of other technologies. I personally believe that the opt-in bi-directional systems are better um, right now because more people can use them. I'd love to see 100 million people using uh, uh, COVID near you or COVID tracker or one of these other systems right now.